uh, our next speaker, uh, Kawi Chong Kitabon, Senior Fellow at the Institute of Security and International Studies at Chulalongkorn University and a veteran journalist on regional affairs who knows more, I think, about ASEAN than most people I can think of. So, uh, Kawi, over to you. You're going to put a little more focus, I think, on the Mekong subregion and the yes. great as new strategic competition in the context of our, our broader topic today. Thanks. Over to you. Well, thank you very much, Gwent. Uh, it's good to see you again. Thank you for your kind uh, introduction. My topic today is about uh, Mekong subregions uh, as a new battleground for the um, great powers. It's a big strategic uh, competition. So I would like to uh, emphasize, especially uh, when uh, between Team America and Team Xi Jinping. The reason I say Team Xi Jinping because he's gonna stay a long time, you know, uh, and we don't know uh, who will be the next president of uh, America. I will start my presentation to, uh, uh, with my conclusion, so it will save time. My conclusion is that uh, Mekong Kong subregion is the backbone of Indo-Pacific region and everything that we have discussed in the past two days, whether it's the economic dimension, political dimension, strategic dimension, because if there is a crack, if there's a crack inside Mekong, you have to understand Mekong is in the center, it's the heart, you know, just like artichoke, it's the heart. Mm of the Indo-Pacific. And Mekong is a great, great area. You know, it's over 700 uh, square kilometers. It's uh, uh, very biodiverse. It's friendly to all. That's explain why at this time, uh, Mekong welcome all the participants, whoever want to set foot in this part of the world. And I agree with Eric, the new battleground is no longer in maritime. Maritime now is for everyone. It's like a trophy, trophy, where you can go and exercise whatever fun of. But it is in Mekong where I think each country will try to set foot. But today, having said that, I will focus on three organization, our three framework, because at the moment there are at least the last count, 13 framework by various donor, consortium of donors and international organization. The reason I write to highlight only three, uh, the US, the Mekong US partnership, China's led uh, Lanchang Mekong uh, cooperation, and finally, uh, the one that uh, I would put more focus with this indigenous uh, framework coming from the lower Mekong riparians, uh, which is uh, known through its acronym ACMEC, come from the, all the major rivers in the mainland uh, Southeast Asia. So there are other uh, framework, but other framework, I think in the future, we will try to allies uh, with these uh, three major framework. Now, I would like to start off with uh, Mekong US uh, framework, which is very strategic and also under Biden. Biden has already uh, said that uh, Mekong will be one of the key area that America will uh, participate and also encourage friend and ally to jump in. American government has already commit $155 million. We still, uh, country in the region still want to see uh, the real uh, green bills, but at the moment, not yet. And I think America realized that in order to uh, participate actively in this part of the world in Asia, Southeast Asia is very important. And inside Southeast Asia, Mekong region, uh, is the key. This is why uh, with uh, the assistance of uh, Vietnam last year, um, 
America has been able to rejuvenate the lower Mekong initiative into something new. You know, after 10 years, uh, America's uh, too bad has not uh, done that much. And I hope that with rejuvenated uh, Mekong, the US uh, partnership, America will do more. Now, in contrast, China led uh, Lanchang Mekong has done a lot within the past five years. You would be surprised if I give you this uh, figure. There are already 500 projects. Our Indian friends said that, you know, the Chinese like to uh, sign. Yes, they love to sign. They love to have agreement. But the problem with China is that they move quickly. After they sign a lot of uh, agreement, the next day they come up with uh, expert team. And then the next week uh, after that, they come up with money. And then three months later, they set up an institute to oversee. That is the case with the uh, Global Center for Mekong's uh, a study. So China attitude toward Mekong region is very interesting. People often say that Mekong is a backyard of China. I often argue that Mekong is the front yard. The Chinese would say Qianmen. So China is very careful to make sure that front lawn is beautiful. It's a south to south cooperation, make sure that it worked well. That is why you have seen this kind of mixed reactions from the uh, lower Liberian country uh, about uh, all the Chinese uh, design program on that. So, so far, so good. I, I will not uh, go into detail. I just want to highlight my last point. To counter uh, these two major power with the uh, very active, very comprehensive um, a Mekong program. Southeast Asian country, the lower Mekong, Thailand, Vietnam, Laos, Myanmar, and Cambodia, you know, they got together 18 years ago, but uh, their cooperation uh, have not received much attention. For one thing, they, uh, they don't have the money, they have other things to, to attend to, and the strategic environment uh, was not as urgent as today. So I think uh, in the past three years, under the leadership of Thailand, Vietnam, and of course the other riparian country, they thought that it's about time that ECMEC come together again and be serious. When I said be serious, mean that they want to create a regional grouping within Lobo Mekong that can counter both the framework proposed by major powers. Of course, I mentioned the United States, uh, Mekong Partnership and China Lanchang, there are others, but others uh, framework are not much a problem because as uh, because uh, global Liberian country have already accept and taken, for example, Japan Mekong Corporation, Korean Mekong, uh, New Zealand, Australians, and now EU is also planning um, Mekong action plan, not to mention Israel and uh, including uh, Switzerland. So everybody uh, are interested uh, in Mekong. But for me, it's very important for ECMEC to move forward and act in a concrete way. And I'm very happy after 17 years, uh, last year, uh, uh, Viet uh, uh, Vietnamese uh, leader come out and say that uh, already Mekong has developed a unique way. I would say that uh, Mekong centrality or Mekong centric way of doing things because for 17 years, they know each other, they try to cooperate each, uh, with one another. So from now on, I think uh, ECMEC will come out as a group to contest, to counter, at least uh, hopefully in the futures, uh, they would have uh, come out with, uh, I would say, uh, norms and standard uh, governing issues that uh, all country that involved in Mekong would like to see, for example, uh, 
uh, water management, uh, hydropowers, uh, environment protections, uh, uh, fishing, uh, stock preservation, and many others. But what is important uh, is that ECMIC must come out with its own standard. And these standards and norm must be able to challenge uh, those from China and from America. And I think this is the, the bigger challenge. And if ECMIC can do so, it would provide the backbone for other to build on. And this will form much stronger uh, uh, foundation for ASEAN. At the moment, uh, a lot of people think that uh, ASEAN is not paying attention uh, to Mekong because of the uh, division between mainland Southeast Asia and maritime Southeast Asia. I don't think that is true. I think ASEAN has a lot on its plate at the moment. In fact, ASEAN is very uh, interested in sub-regional uh, cooperation because there are many platforms. Every platform uh, supplemented the overall ASEAN integration and uh, community. So that's my, my take on uh, ECMIC uh, in the futures. And one of the most important elements, I think, is uh, on the cooperation on water management. As you can see, uh, today the problems uh, related to Mekong, mainly with the, uh, the water flows, the, uh, the access to data and information from uh, upper Liberian countries like China, and also how each country, uh, whether is it upper in the middle or in downstream, how can they ma manage the waters? At the moment, I think if there is a, a enough confidence, I am sure ECMED country would be able to initiate what I would describe as uh, water regimes uh, so that uh, there will be a standard uh, way to use the water, take care uh, both qualities and uh, whatever that is need to make a healthy river. And I think that would be the aim. I would end my discussion here, I would like to repeat, as I said uh, from the beginning, that uh, Mekong subregion is the backbone of Indo-Pacific architecture, whatever you want to use. And if there is a crack in, in, crack in Mekong because of too many players, because of too many uh, framework, uh, then the foundation of the whatever they will build on in the specific will be very fragile. Thank you very much. Um, Gwen? Yeah, uh, th thank you, Koei. Uh, before we move on, and uh, I know that there will be some questions about this. Um, and uh, as you mentioned, ACMEX is just one of uh, many uh, of these, uh, a proliferation of organizations set up in the region. Just a very quick point before we move on. I think one of the big problems was funding. And as we all know, Thailand, you know, was big on ACMEX, uh, uh, basically claimed to found it and build it up. Uh, but actually, it has not really had significant funding for, for recent, uh, recent well, times. Um, well, they plan to have uh, 500 million uh, seed fund. At the moment, they have... Uh, around 300 with contribution from Thailand, from Vietnam and Cam Cambodia. So in the end, I think uh, all country, particularly because they have to uh, be part of uh, ownership of uh, Mekong, they will contribute money. And then the, uh, the ECMIC country have designed a program called uh, Developing Partnership. There is a, a batch, batch one and batch two. Batch one already have major six country. So this will help. Of course, we have a financial problem, but what we have is the uh, indigenous uh, uh, rights that we, uh, in the region, if we get together, we uh, speak with one voice and we move forward. I think it will be a very powerful group, Gwen. Okay, thanks, Kari. We'll, we'll maybe come back to that 